Hi again then guys and welcome to yet another tune setup of course for one of the 1.32 vehicles we covered the Integra already in I believe that was N200 now we're moving up one category to N300 at least for the basis of this tune and you don't have to stick to that because I do get people asking me a lot do you have to stick to the tune that I've got in the thumbnail no you don't you, not by any means this car can go all the way up to N600 so you can still use the basic idea of the tune and just adjust a couple of things like the tyres, maybe drop the ride height a little bit more, extend the gears, but the basic principle will still apply. Now as far as what I've done, I've optimised it for N300 because cars like TVRs, which are naturally very light, will often be even more OP in a lower class because they're still so quick. But as I said, by all means take the power up if you want to. Now as far as traction control, we've got that turned off because it is quicker if you learn to drive without relying on it, but of course it depends from driver to driver, your skill level, experience. As far as tyres, we've got sports softs, and as I've said before, the reason for that is if you build a car just to be good on racing tyres, well then if you're forced to use sports tyres, it could turn out to be awful. Whereas if you make a car already good on sports tyres, then with racing, it just gets even better. So it's a much better all-round thing to do. As far as the suspension, we've got the ride height slightly lower on the front, 90 compared to 95mm on the back. The reason for that is this is naturally a car which sits with its backside lower than the front. That's not ideal for circuit racing really, so we've just adjusted that basically. As far as the frequency on the springs, I'd recommend 2.25 for the anti-roll bars 7 and 6, so increasing the back a bit. For the compression on the dampers, we've got 64 with 92 on the rebound. I have got a little bit of camber on this one. Not too surprising for a TVR, it's kind of the, the same principles that you'd use with something like a Shelby Cobra, very similar, basic, old school kind of sports car. So I've got one degree just for that extra bit of stability, especially when you're getting sideways sometimes. Neutral toe, of course it's down to you if you want to use a bit of toe. As far as the diff, you could by all means try different things. The diff makes a massive difference and that's often why I don't have to use camber with my tunes because you can control the handling so much more precisely, I would say, with the diff than you can with camber or toe. Now I've gone for the lowest settings on all three and the result of that is that the car does get its tail out but it does a funny thing where you don't really drift, it actually ends up feeling really quick through the corner even though its tail is out and it's oversteering in sort of a weird old school Grand Prix car kind of way but it gives you good laps so it looks great and it's fast it's a pretty good advantage to have both then as far as the transmission finally you want of course the fully customized option I've gone for 199 miles per hour on the auto setting and of course this is for N300 in particular so you will want longer gears or in other words lower numbers if you give it more power I'd recommend 2.5, 1.7, 12.75, 1.8 with a final drive of 3.7 so that's it for the tune of course you can change a ton of stuff make a hybrid of my tune putting your own flair in there as well but what you want to see is how it compares to my other tunes so, how does it compare? Well, actually, it compares very well. Now, it's still not quite on the level of what is currently the holy grail of my N300 sports cars, which is the Porsche 996 shape, the early 2000s GT3 RS. That's still a couple of seconds quicker than this, but this is quicker than my Hyundai Genesis in N300, which probably doesn't sound like a big deal. I mean, a TVR faster than a Hyundai? Who'd have ever guessed? But trust me, the Hyundai Genesis is a deceptively good car. So the fact that this is even better than that, that is impressive. Now, as far as the handling goes, I said that it does get the tail out, and you can see that in this video. But the funny thing is, I would recommend trying exactly what I've done with the tune, and then you can always change other stuff after, but it's a very unique handling experience. It feels like the car's going to be slippery, but it actually isn't. The handling is really good, it just kind of drifts its way through every corner, but in a really fast way. It's actually quite entertaining to drive. Now, as far as caution points, I would just say be cautious about correcting oversteer, because sometimes you might think that the car is sliding too much, then you'll turn the opposite lock to try and counteract that, and then you could jackknife the other way. So be careful of that. It's not super easy to do, but it's possible for sure, so just be aware of that. 
As far as lap times, you're looking just over 155s in N300 on those sports softs. So it's definitely got a ton of potential. Of course, the higher the class, the better the lap. So overall, if you do decide to use this tune, I hope you have a ton of fun with it, win races with it, and of course, click right here on screen to see literally all of my other GT Sports setups. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.